My name is Jacqueline Buglisi, and I am dancer, choreographer, artistic director of Buglisi Dance Theatre, educator, chair of the Graham Base Modern Department at the Ailey School, where I teach Martha Graham technique for 31 years. I like to create an environment um, and a creative process um, that shapes the future of our students and dancers to realize their vision yes. to building a sustainable future that contributes to the legacy and the culture of our time. Yes. And um, we want them to create, which is exactly what you were saying, a culture. And that's why something, this kind of program, I think, can really um, lay the seeds to manifest and to nurture um, the future. Dancing for me has been a lifelong process of dedication, um, devotion to um, an art form that I was fortunate to begin at a very early age. Um, my mother took me to dancing school when I was four years old and I began um, with the Swoboda sisters and I, at an early age, I was taking um, ballet classes and acrobatics taught by these Russian, in the Russian method. And so I was very fortunate to have the Swoboda sisters as my, um, my memory of fir first teachers in Long Island, New York. I was very fortunate to attend the High School of Performing Arts in New York City in the 1960s, and there I met some of the most amazing teachers. Mary Vigman came to visit uh, at the Boston Conservatory of Music's Young People's Program, and my teacher, Jan Veen, allowed me to give her the flowers um, and meet her um, when she last, you know, on her last visit to New York. Um, I told Mary Vigman that I was going to be moving back to New York City with my family, and she suggested that I contact Martha Graham. I then came to New York City at the recommendation of Jan Veen and Ruth Ambrose to take an audition at the High School of Performing Arts. And shortly thereafter, I met Martha Graham. The first time I met Martha Graham, um, I was taking class at the Martha Graham School of Contemporary Dance at uh, 316 East 63rd Street, which was what we called Martha's House. And um, she had this incredible, presence, her magnificent um, power was felt in the studio. Um, the way she spoke, her depth, her insight, her vision, and the way she could um, bring you to a point of the high, reaching the highest level of um, excellence. You always were in, um, in a state of almost ecstatic um, passion. And I, I can only say that it was one of the greatest things um, that happened in my life was to dance in the Martha Graham Dance Company and to work and sit next to Martha Graham, uh, to be a part of many of the ballets that she created. Um, to be in the room with her was to be in the room um, with the divine. Martha called us her, um, her divine normals, her acrobats of the God. She elevated us to a level of the realm that I call where the angels court graces. Um, you've, you always did and performed more than you in it, in thought you could because you were so inspired uh, by Martha's vision um, and her um, ability to drive you into um, 
a state that I, I think through, um, well, I was going to say a very, a very deeply passionate, visceral um, way of moving, of dancing, of expressing oneself. So you brought body, mind, and soul together as one. I mean, Martha um, taught me so many things um, about staging a work, um, about how when you enter the stage, you bring um, everything that you have, body, mind, soul, spirit, and a sense of being born into the instant, in that moment um, of complete concentration, focus, and confidence. When you enter that stage, you go through the center of the storm. There's no way out except through the center. And when you express from the heart, from this deep place within yourself, a passionate place of truth, um, you are communicating with your audience. And that is the greatest gift of all, to be able to have your audience feel that they can um, see themselves within what you are, story, yes, or passion, physical, expression that you are trying to convey. Um, this is the great legacy that Martha Graham left us, is um, that ability through her technique, through the study of a classic technique, you are given the strength and the underpinning to do what is necessary today in going and working with many diverse choreographers. You know, you want to be able to work with many different voices, many different styles, and when you have a classic underpinning of technique, like the Martha Graham technique, you will be able to achieve your goal. Well, you know, I just wanted to mention the Table of Silence because these dancers, I hope we can invite some of you to join me in the Table of Silence on 9-11. We do several workshops and I, I encourage you to participate um, in this magnificent performance. A site-specific performance like this is a once in a lifetime. And we live stream it to the world. Last year we reached, in that moment, 82,000 people. So the basic element of Martha Graham technique is the contraction and release. Um, tension and the release of tension. Opposition, yes. Um, strength and vulnerability. The strength and vulnerability of the individual are revealed. One of the most important elements of the Graham technique that you will learn is the breath, how to breathe, contraction and release. Yes, when you take the breath into the body and the exhalation of the body, so contraction, yes, breathing in, high release, exhale, and contraction. And contraction is a very expressive mo movement, natural to human existence, yes? Um, when we breathe, we take our concentration totally into the breath, yes? Thereby being born into the moment that you are living, this moment. When you dance, you have to be present at the moment that you are living. Being born to the instant, um, I can't say that enough, how important it is for a dancer to be able to um, speak to the moment. Uh, when I do my project, uh, the Table of Silence project on 9-11, one of the most important elements that the dancers learn 
is breathing. How to breathe, take the breath into the body, the inhalation and the exhalation. And to only be thinking in that mindful way, deep mindful uh, practice, contemplative practice, the same thing that we learn when we practice Graham technique um, is through uh, the power, yes, of concentration, dedication, bringing all body, mind, and soul together as one. When you believe in yourself, yes, you are able to share your art, your work with your colleagues on stage as you all, the first thing you have to learn how to do when you dance is to dance with your colleagues, yes? What do we all share on this earth? Oxygen, yes? And so when we come together, what do we all share together? These same commonalities that are the essence, not only of living, but of the technique that you are practicing. So as Martha would say, yes, you practice your craft the same way you practice living. A lot of times a dancer doesn't realize they get anxiety before they're going on. And I tell them, you know, repeat the mantra to yourself. If you think you can, you can, you know? And that, I always say, and I've had many of, uh, like our LE2 dancers come up and say, thank you, Ms. Puglisi, because that really worked for me before I was entering the stage, to come into that state of calmness, yeah, and then boom, yeah, the muscle has a memory, it comes out. You know, you're able to release yourself into the moment in a sense um, and realize your strongest passion and your greatest, perhaps your greatest performance. You know, um, I think that that's uh, something that's very hard to convey in one sentence, um, in one thought. But um, in 1977, I was invited to join the Martha Graham Dance Company. Um, I never forget that joy I experienced in meeting Martha Graham and being a part of her incredible theater. So when you're performing and working in the Martha Graham Dance Company, you also learn a history. You learn about ancient history. Your curiosity sends you into knowing about the ancient world and the myths that make up what is the human condition. I think that um, when you start to educate yourself in that way, yeah, which informs your work. I always like to bring science and art together in my own work. Um, I love collaboration. I've been very fortunate to collaborate with artists like Jacobo Borges, environmental artist of Venezuela, where I created my trilogy, environmental trilogy, um, and that is the uh, beauty of the magnitude of working with someone like Martha Graham. You are taken into this world of, I think, what is the deeper essence of what makes us human. It gives us a history of humanity. I felt very compelled almost to continually be in this state of study. History was always one of my favorite subjects in school when I was in the high school performing arts. And it only was natural for me um, to take my curiosity and just go further and further um, until, this, until this time when um, the last piece that I am creating for my company, Baglisi Dance Theater, is moss. Moss, which um, brought oxygen to the earth 40 million years ago. Space is so important to the creative process. When we don't have space, we can't create, or we create in our living room. Um, which I suggest it's okay to do. If you're listening to a piece of music in the middle of the night and you suddenly get an inspiration, go for it. Yes, put on the music, 
take out whatever you can, <laughs> record yourself um, in whatever way you can, and keep creating that dance. Um, that was how I created many of my first dances, was an inspiration came to me, um, life experience. Life experience can lead you into the need, the desire to express yourself through movement. The universal language, the most powerful way of expression. Yeah, you can say, oh, I, 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 can't, I can't say it. It's ineffable. It's poetic. That's why you dance. Because through this universal language of the body, the movement, you are able to tell your story, to express the deepest emotions of humanity when we move through this, our instrument, the instrument of the human body, the most powerful instrument and language we have. When I was working with Martha Graham, through the years, um, I, I was part of the Martha Graham Dance Company and my husband was also, dominant Foreman, part of the Martha Graham Dance Company. And we lived our life in the studio. Um, I was fortunate that I had the key to Martha's studio. And we would rehearse until 10 o'clock at night. We start early in the morning with class. Then often you had a Pilates warm-up before you did your class. And at 1.30 in the afternoon after company class, we began rehearsals. We went until 6 o'clock. And then um, we would have a dinner break. And we would continue rehearsing with Martha from 8 to 10 p.m. So it's a very long day. And we had Sunday was the day off. Saturday and Sunday was supposed to be the day off. But we always only had Saturday off. And we gave, as a gift to Martha, Sunday as well. We would come in Sunday afternoon to rehearse with Martha because we were her family. The first time I taught at Juilliard, I think, was 1993. And um, I had access to the studios there, and that gave me the ability to be able to create some of the works that um, are very, very uh, meaningful to me. Uh, one of them was uh, Suspended Women, and I was able to work with some of the beautiful dancers, um, not only at the Juilliard School, but from the different companies. Um, that were, at that time, they were my friends. And so um, it's 12 women and four men in that ballet. And um, those dancers were um, extraordinary dancers in their own right. Uh, Christine Dakin, Therese Capacilli, Elizabeth Rojas, um, just a beautiful uh, group of dancers that I had the privilege to work with because I was given um, access to these incredible studios. Having space and being able to just walk into a studio when you are inspired, one of the greatest things um, that also comes from having worked with Martha is knowing what it, <laughs> it is to be inspired. I was first inspired to create um, this work, Threshold, with Therese Capacilli and Donlin Foreman. And from that moment, it just seemed like, um, I don't know, uh, like you were just on a roll. It just, it just kept coming. And uh, Donlin, um, when my partner um, in life and I seemed to be compelled into uh, forming a company with Therese Capacilli and Christine Dakin. Um, so you take your, your colleagues, your network, those people you are working with, all become part of you being able to build a company. Um, 
that is what is so important in dance too. You always, you, you always need to keep embracing those people you dance with, that you work with. They will be the ones that help you to create a company. And I was so fortunate to have that as the underpinning and the backbone to my being able to create a company. You never do it alone. I could never have done it without my colleagues. Um, and all of us working, creating, and supporting each other. When I go into the studio to work with my dancers, they are helping to create whatever work I am trying to uh, express, whatever the story is, whatever the subject is. Um, you know, usually it's about the human condition. It's about the strengths and vulnerabilities of being human. I tend to want to go into the emotions, the depths, um, through curiosity, inspiration, being aware, letting your tentacles out, feeling the world around you. That is what informs your work. And having been privileged to, to have toured the world with a company like Martha Graham, there was a, there was a lot of information in there. There's a lot of history. Um, you want to take your legacy with you as you go, and I hope that in a program such as um, Dance Pre de New York, that we would be able to encourage, uh, inspire, and to bring along the young generation um, into the depths of what is uh, contemporary dance, the leg and to carry on this cultural legacy. And that was 1977. The first dance that I ever performed with Martha Graham was Primitive Mystery. Um, from that point on, I was able to uh, go on to become a principal dancer, performing many of the roles, uh, the Yellow Girl in Diversion of Angels, uh, the chorus leader in Night Journey, um, Joe Costa in Night Journey, um, these roles are roles that come out of the myths. Martha had a way of understanding, I think, the, the deep, deep tragedies and, and also uh, beauties and joy of humanity. And she related that to you, I think, in the way that we, we were able to communicate with her outside of the studio. Um, I remember right after I had my son, Bradley, uh, Martha wanted me to bring some, uh, Bradley to the studio, and she held him in her arms. Um, I remember the moment I told Martha I was pregnant, and she looked at me and she said, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, which is a quote from a prayer. Um, she had that way of being uh, e extremely intimate, personable, and caring, I think, for every one of us, every one of her dancers. The Dance Prix de New York gives you this great opportunity. I hope I will see you there.